Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's seminar session, uh, which is all about TDS Custodial. Uh, we've aptly named it, Why Should You Use TDS Custodial? Um, it's presented by myself, Kelly Wallace. I'm the sales manager at TDS. Um, I've been with the company for, for six years now, um, going through a range of different departments um, and culminating in my, uh, my sales manager role, where I predominantly assist agents and, and landlords to use TDS Custodial, migrating from, from other schemes um, and assisting with things like training and, and embedding into to the system. So to start off with, I wanted to just provide a brief introduction of the TDS Custodial offering. Um, we launched in 2016, uh, and prior to that, we only offered an, uh, an insured deposit protection service. Um, but from 2016, we were able to offer both insured and custodial. Prior to that time, there was only one custodial scheme that agents and landlords could, could use. So fortunately, from 2016, uh, customers then had the choice of which provider they wanted to use for their custodial deposit protection. In terms of who can use TDS Custodial, there are no uh, limitations with the, with the scheme. So in comparison with the insured scheme and the TDS insured offering, there are certain membership requirements that need to be met in order to, to, to use it. Uh, with TDS Custodial, it's instant. Um, and the, the biggest benefit with the scheme is that it's completely free. So there are no costs to start up a membership. Um, protecting deposits is completely free. Um, and you can create that membership and start lodging deposits straight away. So you're not having to, to wait to, to be kind of welcomed in. Um, it's, a, it's an immediate offering, so you can protect deposits straight away. We find that there's quite a misconception in terms of who can use what scheme and, and, and the variations of the schemes. Um, you can use both insured and custodial um, running alongside each other. You can also use multiple providers, um, but we do work with a lot of agents and landlords who want to use just one provider and have all their deposits under one roof. Um, and we can make that really easy and simple for you uh, and, and help you to, to streamline that deposit protection process and have everything in one place. A quick look at the TDS Custodial dashboard. So this is your landing page when you uh, go into your TDS Custodial membership. Um, we try to, to lay out all the options and all the functionalities as, as clearly as possible. So you have deposit management, dispute management, my portfolio and reporting. So you can easily see which area you need to go in to manage deposits effectively. In terms of the key features um, within TDS Custodial, there's quite a lot of functionality that we incorporated into, into the scheme to make the deposit protection as, as easy and simple as possible um, and also safe. Um, so in terms of the, the structure of your membership, you can have a head office and a branch structure, which means that you can have one overarching membership but have multiple branches shown within that. You can also then set up users either to the head office or just to individual branches so that if you do have colleagues that are at a particular site, they can only then see what's, you know, what they need to see. Um, alternatively, you can have people um, on, on, on multiple uh, areas so that they can uh, manage the deposits that they need to. Within that multi-user access, you also have the ability to vary the permissions of your colleagues. So if, for example, you had a staff member who needed to see things but not actually action anything, they can be set up as view only. Um, if you had particular colleagues who, who dealt with the finance side of things or particularly the dispute and end of tenancy process, again, you can vary the permissions depending on what's needed. All of the above uh, are self-managed options. So. You don't need to contact us to, to change those permissions, to add branches, to, to manage your, your database. It can all be done independently um, when, you're, when you're logged in. Some other key features um, when registering deposits. So we've spoken about the kind of setup of your membership and, and making sure that's all streamlined. There's also quite a lot in terms of the, the, the deposit registration itself. So you can build your database um, with properties and landlords, meaning that once you've registered a property once um, and you've added that, that landlord, you don't then need to add them every single time. So it just makes that registration process that little bit easier. Alongside that, you also have the save and pay later option. So what that allows you to do is to register multiple deposits and then make one transaction, um, sending the deposit monies to us rather than having to do that individually. Um, so alongside the, the kind of functionality that we have with registering deposits and making that easier, we do also have a bulk import option, um, which allows you to, to use a spreadsheet to, to import the, the data that would form the basis of the deposit registrations. So again, you wouldn't need to do those um, individually. Um, that bulk up uh, import functionality is there should you, should you want to use it. 
So we've spoken about the kind of membership setup and the and the start of the tenancy process. Compliance and the and that the mid tenancy process is is obviously very very important. Um, so what we've tried to do is create a transparent view of your database to be able to see at a glance what's going on and what stage um, tenancies and deposits are at via your own database. Um, it allows you to see instantly what actions are needed to be taken. So for example, if a repayment request has been raised by the tenant, of course we do email you to notify you um, that there's action needed, but actually when you log into your database, you will see at a glance um, if repayment requests have been raised and if there's action needed to, to be taken. Alongside that, in terms of the initial compliance and the uh, requirements of the deposit protection legislation, you obviously have to register the deposit within 30 days of receipt, but you also need to serve those documents to the tenant. So that's the prescribed information and the scheme leaflet. We try to make that process as easy as possible by pre-populating the prescribed information for you. Um, so it takes all of the information from the registration um, and then we email it to you. So it's it's there in a nice bundle for you to, to comply with the legislation and serve those documents easily to, to the tenant. Alongside the individual kind of uh, compliance elements that we have, we uh, have a reporting function on the database. So that allows you to export a report of your deposits. It shows you the different stages that, that, that the deposits are, are at. Again, so you can easily kind of do any reconciliation that you need and make sure that you're on top of what needs to be done. In terms of uh, alongside the, the compliance side of things, mid-tenancy management um, and those Kind of nuances and things that come up during the tenancy that can be quite uh, time consuming um, and, and frustrating to, to deal with when it comes to, to deposits. We've tried to include um, a range of, of features and functions that make those those things that do crop up as, as easy as possible. So such things as a tenant changeover function, if there's a change of tenants mid-tenancy, you don't need to repay the deposit out and re-protect it and worry about a break in the protection. Um, we have a simple button that you can click um, to tell us who's moving out, if any, uh, any money is due to be paid to them, um, and it maintains it all within the system and the database, again, so it can be done independently. Alongside that, we have the uh, the lead tenant function. Um, so we do have a lead tenant model in TDS Custodial, but it's a very fluid lead tenant model in that you can change that at the click of a button um, if one of the tenants wants to be the lead tenant or perhaps someone's not communicating or, or you know doesn't want it to be the lead tenant, you can simply just change that um, instantly on your database. With tenants, you can also update their contact details. So it may have been when you registered the deposit, you only had a mobile number. Um, you can add in the email address yourself and that automatically triggers the communication to the tenant. Or it may be that, you know, a human human error and there's been a spelling uh, spelling error in the uh, in the email address. We often see dot, dot com instead of, you know, dot code UK, things like that. You can simply just update that email address. And again, that would trigger automatic communication to the tenant. So you wouldn't need to contact us and ask us to do that. You can do it all via your database. Uh, the final thing that I wanted to mention was the deposit cap solution. So that was something that we introduced, obviously, in line with the, with the fee ban and the, and the introduction of the deposit cap. Again, you can simply just click a button and tell us the new value of the deposit. And what that does, it triggers an automatic payment to the tenant to, to, to send them that the surplus deposit that you've said can be returned. Um, all done on the database, all the documents and the, the registration is automatically updated. Um, and the only thing that we would do is obviously contact the tenant if we don't already have their bank details. I wanted to just provide a quick overview and, and a look at that um, deposit management page that, I, that I've referenced a few times, which shows you the different stages of a, of a deposit. And it kind of works through the life cycle of the, of the tenancy, right through from registered to, to the obviously end of tenancy process and the repayment. Um, as I mentioned, you can see at a glance what's going on. So if there was a repayment that had been raised by the tenant um, in that uh, section where it currently says zero, it would show you that there's something in there um, and that there's action needed to be taken. So we've spoken about the beginning, middle, and uh, only right to, to end on the end of tenancy process. Um, and a few things that we have on the system to make that easier as well. Um, the statutory declaration process is, um, you know, it's, it's a time consuming aspect for, for all parties. Um, but in an instance where um, one of the parties doesn't respond to a repayment request, and you do need to submit a, a stat deck or statutory declaration as, as, as it's known, um, what we have incorporated is that any user on the on the membership can sign the, that that document and send it to us. So it's not limited to one one person or um, the responsibility of, of of one user. 
where we have the multi-user access on the database, anyone who's on there and has the authority to sign can, can do so. We also have a deductions template. So it's an online document that the parties can use in terms of their negotiations with the tenant at the end of the tenancy if there are deductions that are, are being proposed. Um, the template, as I said, is it's an online document, so it can be sent via email. And it's just a means of having that discussion with the tenant, um, laying out the deductions that you are proposing and highlighting the reason why those are, are, are being uh, that those deductions are, are, uh, are being proposed. What we find is that tenants are more likely to engage and agree when a repayment request is raised if they're already aware of, of the deductions and why there are those deductions. So using this template is really uh, just, just, again, trying to streamline that end of tenancy process as much as possible. If the parties come to the end of the tenancy and have you know, tried to, to negotiate and it's just it's not happening and, 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 and an agreement can't be reached, then obviously we would proceed to a, a dispute um, and an adjudication from, from there. What we have is an online dispute portal. So rather than submitting evidence by email or sending it by a post, we have this online portal which allows the parties to upload their evidence. Um, it's a really transparent process. So when you're uploading documents, you can see what you're what you're uploading. You can make sure that it's been uh, you know that it's done correctly. Um, and we also to help you to to structure your your claim um, in relation to to what it is that you're that you're disputing. So. If, for example, you have raised, uh, um, uh, you, you you want to make a deduction based on damage, we'll ask you for the kind of key documents that we would need to see um, related to, to that particular claim. So to, to, to end, um, I guess I just wanted to, to reach out to those people who, who don't currently use TDS Custodial and based on the features and functionalities that I've spoken about, you know, are interested in, in, in using us. Um, we do have a transfer process in place from other uh, deposit providers over to TDS Custodial. Similarly, we have an internal transfer process for those that maybe currently use TDS Insured, um, but wanting to use TDS Custodial. Uh, for both those elements, we have dedicated teams in place to assist with, with those kind of transfers. Um, and it's a really straightforward and easy process. Um, and, you know, we do all the, all the work for you. So that's all from, from me today. Um, for those who are thinking about using TDS Custodial, I've included a couple of links there. One is the switch page. So it gives you a bit more information about the, the elements and things that I've spoken about and how that switch is done. Um, if there was something that I've mentioned today that you were wanted to learn more about, or perhaps you wanted a more personalized demonstration of the database to actually go through in a bit more detail those features and functions that I've, I've touched upon today, um, we, can, we can do that for you. So I've included a link there um, for, for you to make contact with us and we'd be happy to help. So thank you so much for, for your time and I uh, hope everyone is safe and well and hopefully get to see everyone soon.